I'm Michael Fox and this is the Prospector News Podcast and we're on location right now at the Current Trends in Mining Finance Conference put on by the New York chapter of the SME. And joining me I have a longtime friend, uh, CEO of Backtech Environmental, Ross Orr. Welcome Ross. Thank you Michael, good to be here. It's good to have you here. So since we last talked, there's been lots of activity behind the scenes in uh, back tech. Uh, things are moving along in, on a couple of fronts, but uh, most importantly, there seems to be a funding option now for the, uh, the project in Ecuador. Uh, what can you tell me about these green bonds? Well, an interesting thing happened on the way to the green bonds, and we realized that uh, people don't like lending money if there's no collateral behind the loan. Uh, so uh, having a 100-acre cocoa plantation in uh, Ecuador as a, as a site for our plant uh, as collateral, uh, which is worth about a million dollars Canadian, is not something that is going to back up a $15 million loan. So what we decided to do was, and through, through a group called Analytica in uh, Ecuador, was pursue getting our green acc accreditation. accreditation. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, um, getting uh, rubber stamped as a as a green company that is that has the ability to issue green bonds to what is actually growing into be about a 600 billion dollar a year uh, industry as far as the amount of capital that's raised through green bonds uh, we will go through probably somebody like moody's uh, after we make our submission and they will then uh, look at our application and decide whether or not we will get the uh, accreditation um, for for a green bond and then analytica is uh, taking on the the, uh, the job of, of raising the $20 million U.S. that we're going to raise through these green bonds. Perfect. And what level of, the, of that financing takes care of uh, taking this plant to, uh, to the finish line? A hundred percent. Wonderful. So there's a lot wrapped up into these green bonds. Absolutely. So $15 million is the capex, $5 million is the working capital. Don't forget, we're buying, every day we're buying 50 tons of concentrate from the miners in, uh, in Ponce Enriquez. Uh, that averages around two two ounces per ton. So you know, do the math. It's 100 ounces of gold we're buying every day, at 65 to 70 cents on the dollar, mind you, not not 100 cents. But that does tie up a lot of capital because it's probably going to be at least a month before we turn around that that the the sale of the gold silver dory bars. That's the length of time that the process takes to to remove the arsenic and uh, and waste from the. No, gold. that's six days. That's six days. But now you've got to sell it. And you've got to get it to Waikil, you've got to get it to Europe, to the refiners, wherever. And then, and of course, then you become uh, an accounts receivable uh, from the refinery, so they will then eventually pay you in 30 days or whatever it is. I see. Yeah. So it's, it's the, long, the longer financial process rather than the short term. Absolutely. I know that the process is six days. Um, you know. And who buys these green bonds? Is that family offices? Is it mom and pops? Or what, what types of people invest in the green bonds that you're, uh, uh, you're going to be putting out? Probably uh, ESG funds. Uh, I would think also some uh, quasi-World Bank groups. I mean, maybe the, uh, the uh, Inter-American Development Bank. I mean, you know, that's, that's Analytica's job, not ours. But, but I would say anybody that's in the green space and is looking for something that actually is going to give them a return as opposed to a flyer, so to speak. Um, because, you know, green bonds, they, 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 they understand that they're financing operations that don't have the underlying assets to support what would be a normal loan. Uh, it'll be expensive. It'll probably be 12% interest. Um, but fortunately for us, our margins are going to be 25% because of our tax holiday for 12 years in Ecuador. Uh, our margins are, are going to be roughly 25% after tax. So uh, we can afford to take the hit on the first, the first plant, but then the bigger plant comes in, in phase two, which is gonna be probably 60 to $70 million investment, but we'll at least have some track record, some production in place, and the expansion doesn't affect the existing operations, which is good as well. That's perfect. And how long does it take for someone to get accredited for, uh, for a green bond <laughs> process? Um, well, we were, we were originally um, told by a Toronto-based law firm that we were crazy. It was going to cost us a million dollars. This law firm tends to do $500 million deals, though, so I can understand where it would be a million dollars for something like that. 
we're probably going to get the whole thing done for probably about fifty thousand dollars. And I would say that the, the the work that's being done by Sequester, which is a Toronto-based uh, carbon capture company, um, they're they're assembling all the documentation for us. They said that'll be ready by the end of May, so three weeks from now. And then uh, somebody like Moody's has quoted four to six weeks turnaround on on that, doing their evaluation of of the of the bond. So you could be a green bond issuer by the fall. I'm hoping by September would be great. Yeah, Perfect. Marketing. And then how long, once the green bonds are, are issued uh, before the plant is up? Well, I would say from when the ink dries on the check, um, you're probably looking at about nine months of, of uh, construction and then maybe a month or so of, of um, commerciality, you know, to get commercialized uh, status. So, yeah, under a year anyways. So, you know, by third quarter of next year, you could be up and running. Yeah, yeah. This is all very good news. It's great news, and I can't wait to do it, to get into production because I'm sick and tired of living off the equity markets. Uh, you know, it's uh, not a great great market right now for anything. Um, you know, the the price of gold at 2,000 is uh, the last time it was at 2,000. I think the venture exchange was three times the uh, valuation that it is today, and uh, it just seems to be that good news is is met with ho hum, and bad news is hit with a sledgehammer. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny that way. The the stocks are lagging behind everything, but more importantly, I'm guessing that you're going to be uh, happy to stop having to deal with the uh, accountants and the lawyers and dotting i's and crossing t's and getting down to the good work. You know, the reality is that the what we've done to date, like we're literally on the one yard line. I know that's an expression everybody uses all the time, but you know, there's one there's one permit left to get, which is this consultation. We're one of 108 companies that are all waiting for the, the new rules for, for this consultation. The difference is we're not a mining company. And the people in the area where we want to build the plant know that they're going to be paid a lot more money for their job than what they're getting right now. Uh, we've even gone as far as to the, the people that, that we sort of uh, supplanted that were the farmers working on the actual farm. We've, we've told them, keep going. You know, keep keep whatever you whatever you whatever you grow, you can sell and you can keep the money because we're not in that business. And when we do eventually cannibalize the other 80 acres of the 100 acre uh, farm, that will give you a job in the plant. So, you know, every day they're knocking on the door saying, "When is this plant going to open?" And I'm saying, "I wish I could tell you." <laughs> you, mean, you mean you can make more money working in the plant than you can being a cocoa farmer? Yes, but don't tell them that just now. <laughs> you know my. It's, it's funny you say that. My wife thinks cocoa is as good as gold. <laughs> but apparently gold is actually better than cocoa. Well, I didn't want 80 acres of dead cocoa trees in my backyard. That's really the, you know. No, it was, it was also the fact that you could just see it in the eyes of the people that they thought they were going to lose their jobs. And so we said, no, no, that's not the case. Uh, you keep doing what you do and keep the proceeds, and then, and then we'll look after you afterwards. So that goes a long way, you know. The, the days of building a soccer field and, and throwing a few balls out there to, to, to make people happy are, are over. They want to be part of what's going on. They, they're excited, I think, these people in this area for, for this plant to open. Well, they should be. And at the end of the day, that's what people want. They want to get a better stake in life. And uh, opportunities like this will give them that, you know, that opportunity to have you know, a better roof over their head, better food. You know, education for their kids, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, win win for everybody concerned. If people want to continue to follow the back tech story as we, uh, as you become a green bond issuer, how would they, uh, how would they follow things? Well, I would encourage you to get onto our distribution list. I mean, you can do that through the website at uh, backtechgreen.com um, and call me. I mean, I'm always happy to talk to anybody on the phone. As a matter of fact, I spend most of my day doing that. And I enjoy it. Uh, so, uh, but I, I think the easiest thing to do is just to get on our distribution list. We've got about 3,500 people on that list right now, and and I'd say probably 30% open the actually what we send them. Um, but it's growing the list obviously because the story resonates with people. They 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 get what we're trying to do, and it's a kinder, gentler way of producing gold than uh, than what, what you know what it's been in the past. Yeah, and as you say, it's everybody in the community is going to end up making more and have a better life. Yeah. So, but it's also incumbent on us to also recognize that you're going to be dropping a sizable amount of money into these people's hands that 
they've never never had before. And so there's an education process on our on our side as well to make sure that you know the the there aren't brand new trucks in the driveway and all the other sins of people that have money dropped in there. I like to say, have you ever heard, when was the last time you heard a good lottery story? Because that's effectively what's happening here is that, you know, someone's all of a sudden going to make a, a lot of money and, and, and bad things can happen to people. I've never heard a good lottery story because a good lottery story is that Michael Fox won the lottery and that's <laughs> never, just never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks very much for joining me and uh, we'll, keep, uh, we'll keep our eye on the back tech story. Great. Thanks. Thanks. For The Prospector News Podcast is for educational purposes only. The opinions expressed are those of the participants and are not to be taken as investment advice. Listeners need to do their own due diligence and seek advice of a licensed investment advisor.